still learning. <laughs> still learning the ropes around here. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Krista Didi, and it is my great delight to welcome you today as we worship and pray and praise, acknowledging that each one of us is a beloved child of God, that nothing separates us from God's love. We come to be bound together as one people. We have so many exciting things happening today. The youth return from their mission trip, all in one piece, I might say. They will be sharing some witnesses this morning, and so we give them thanks for going out as the hands and feet of Jesus. We will also be celebrating Paul Brash's last day with us, which was this week, for the seven years that he committed to help us to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. We are just so very grateful, and we will acknowledge him later in worship, but be thinking about the ways that Paul has influenced you throughout the course of his time here on staff. We come in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, who offers us freedom, hope, redemption, and commitment to be a follower. Thank you, God, for being a witness amongst all of God's people today as we worship and dig even deeper into what it means to be a good neighbor. And so this morning, I invite those of you who are gathered to remember that we are a community, each one of us representing the neighborhoods from which we come, the neighborhood who is with us online today, and all across the land, we are one body. So welcome to worship on this glorious and wonderful day. May we be transformed because God first loved us. Now, do you know that song? No. We love because God first loved us. We love because God first loved us. We love, we love, we love because God first loved us. Pretty simple, right? Join in. Ready? We love because God first loved us. We love because God first loved us. We love. We love, we love, because God first loved us. Amen. Welcome to worship on this day. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus, where are you taking us? Into joy? Into pain? We are afraid. What are So we come to you, protesting and confused, but loving you all the same. You, you will have to hold, I'm sorry, you will have to hold on to us as we walk together through this compelling and frightening landscape of learning the art of neighboring. Please join in singing, Jesus Lord, we look to you.
turn to your neighbors and greet each other in Christian love and fellowship, and also welcome to our online family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Would any kids want to come forward? Big kids, little kids, any kids? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, you guys were all little kids in Kid Men at one point. John, why are you sitting so far away? <laughs> In the Bible passage that you'll hear today, Paul had decision making that he needs to do. Choice one would be to talk to people about Jesus that are just like him, that he's super comfortable with. Choice number two would be to talk, to, swing for the fences and talk to people that he doesn't know or he might not be comfortable with or people that might be higher than him and how people re are respected. So. That would be a bold play, but if he connected, it would be a huge win for spreading the good news about Jesus Christ. So he starts with choice one. He talks to people he knows and it's going pretty well, but then some people overhear him and say, hey, you should talk, about, you should talk to these people. And those people would be in the choice two column. So they're not people he knows, they're not people that he may be super comfortable with, so he steps into the batter's box. He starts swinging and he tells these people all about God and Jesus. And he tells them that they should be worshiping the one true God that we all have. There is only one true God. And even though you can't see him, he's there. And God will be with them every single day. And they should not be worshiping some of their towers or pretend gods that they had been worshiping. So. What do we do? How do we spread the good news about Jesus? How do we tell other people about God? Well, there's lots of ways. I'm guessing some of the mission trip kids did lots of those, had lots of ways this last week of how they spread the good news about Jesus. And sometimes we may swing for the fences and be really bold and tell people with our words all about our church and God and Jesus. And sometimes we might just feel more comfortable showing people by how we act and how we treat others and um, how we help others and what we do. So I know that we only have one VBSer here that is um, the age to come to VBS, but you guys might know some little kids. So a great way to do this, like Paul did, is to tell some friends or some other little kids that you know in the neighborhood about our Vacation Bible School program. And that's a really nice way to be able to talk to people about learning about God, but maybe not such a bold move as, as having to use all the words that, we, that, so, that Paul used when he talked about God. So that's what I want you to think about some little kids that you could invite to vacation Bible school. And either way, doing what God wants us to do and making sure that we are showing others what it means to love Jesus is what we should do every single day. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for all the kids hearing this message today. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Help us to swing for the fences when we live like Jesus 
wants us to live. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everybody. You guys are gonna make me do this by myself? Come on, come on. <laughs> All right, um, so my name is Zoe DeVore. I am the director of youth here at Alaska UMC. And we got back from our mission trip last night. We spent the week in Bayou La Battery, Alabama. And um, we did a lot of work within the community. We got to know four other churches, one from Wisconsin, one from Illinois, one from Georgia, and one from Texas. So that was really cool. Um, I asked our students to um, write little blurbs about what they thought was the most meaningful part of the week. Um, and then we do have two videos to share as well, but we will we'll close out with those. So if you guys wanted to um, just say your name and then you can read what you've written or if you have it in your head, then by all means, say what you've memorized because that's amazing. Uh, we'll start with Thomas. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I wrote my testimony about my first time seeing the Gulf of Mexico. And it was really amazing. So on the way there, we were seeing a lot of people out and about and doing what they do, whatever that is. And on the bridge, I see a lot of pelicans just diving. There are so many, and it was really cool. They just go in at an angle and pick up a fish. And when I saw the gulf, I kind of, it was just all water. There was, nothing to see on the other end. And when I saw that, I realized we haven't, I haven't seen all that much in the world. And I thought that was really humbling. And that's what affected me quite a lot on the trip. Hi. I'm Silas. I wrote my testimony about a woman that we helped on our trip. So we were gonna help serve in the community with youth works and we split into different groups to help serve people. And we went to someone's house to paint and we were painting her deck. And we also built a railing for her, her ramp to get up to the top of her deck. And she, her name was Peanut. That was her nickname. And she was a really nice person. The whole time we were there, I could tell she really enjoyed our company. And she told us a lot about her life. Um, and she was so grateful for our help and also for spending time with her and getting to know her. And she was just such a nice person. I could tell she really liked us. And at the end of the week, she came to the community picnic and we were all so happy to see her. And like, she had a whole crowd of people around her, people, tons of people taking pictures with her. And I really learned this week how service can really help people, but like also getting to know the people you're serving, that's almost more important than the actual service. And in the future, you can continue to do this. Hello, my name is Grace. Um, the way I saw God this week was in our tradition of singing like the fire every single night. It's something we've been doing for SOAR as long as I've been participating in SOAR and I've always loved it. And we always did it at the end of the day with our, with our church group time. And so we had this day of going out and pushing ourselves and serving and doing all these hard and comfortable things. And then it felt really good to be safe and at home and just kind of relax and be with God at the end. It was really nice. Um, I'm John, and uh, where I saw God this week was we were doing work on this one lady's house, 
and her son was about like my age, and we uh, painted his room, and I was talking to him after, getting to know him a little better. He was really grateful for that, so that's where I saw God. Um, my name is Susie, and from my testimony, I would like to talk about Kids Club and a boy named Ashton I met during our time in Alabama. For some background, Kids Club is a program the community center holds for kids to come and spend some time doing activities. It starts at 12 and goes till 3, and we just hang out with kids and have fun. Ashton was a boy I met while helping out. He wanted to play basketball with people and would keep giving you the ball until you made a basket. Ashton was pretty quiet, but he had a lot of kindness in him. Spending my time with him for a couple of hours for two days was probably my favorite part of the trip. Kelsey, one of the staff at YouthWorks, told me the days my service group was not doing kids club, he sat on the bleachers in the gym not wanting to do anything because he missed me. The hardest thing I had to do was leave. I had got to say goodbye to him one last time at the community dinner on Thursday night. I don't know if I'll ever see him again, but my experience with him shows me how much God shines through me and others. In the future, I plan to always be kind to others and never take my time for granted with people. My name is Bailey. I went on the 2022 Youth Works by Labatry mission trip. Every night on this mission trip, there was a specific time to be with their church group. During this time, we talked about our days, did highs and lows, and sang Light the Fire. Light the Fire is a very meaningful song to us all. On Thursday night, the church group meeting was different. This time our leaders, Zoe, Melissa, Eric, and Matt were going to wash our feet and pray over us, just like Jesus did. We did our meeting outside under a covered roof since it was raining. One by one, they washed all of our feet and prayed over us. Thunder and lightning was all around us as we did this. By the time they reached me, I was already crying. As they washed my feet and prayed over me, I felt a sense of warmth. We were all enjoying this moment together. After everyone's feet were washed, we decided the best thing to do is go out in the rain and sing Light the Fire. We ran out into the rain and prayed. Then we began to sing. As the rain poured on us, we all swayed with our arms around each other as we sang. This moment will always be with me. It helped remind me in the future that God is always with me because in that moment, moment I knew he was there. My faith and has and will continue to grow stronger because of this moment. Hello, my name is Anna. I was going to also talk about Peanut and how we helped fix the porch, but then Silas kind of took that. So uh, instead, I'm going to talk about a separate moment with the same people, because uh, we were fixing the ramp because it needed uh, siding or whatever. And the story behind the ramp is that Peanut's mother was in a wheelchair, and she couldn't visit her family in the trailer home because it needed steps to get up there. And so what YouthWork had done last time was build the ramp. However, it was never finished completely because, the mom, because when they had finished the ramp, her mother died. And so YouthWorks didn't eventually finish that because it wasn't really needed anymore. But this week, we went back there and we put up the railings and whatever, and it would Pina was really grateful for that because maybe her mother wasn't there anymore to be able to use it to visit her family, but it opened the door to other people visiting and seeing her and saying hello. And I think it's really important to me that I was able to help someone in such a big way by just donating a little tiny money. Not even my money, the youth words money. But. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kate. A tradition in our high school group is to sing Light the Fire after every sore night, and we extended that into Alabama trip. At the end of every night, we would end with individual group time to talk and reflect on how our day went. At the end, we would stand in a circle and sing Light the Fire. For me, this was always my favorite part of the day, and I would always look forward to this time. The song was always special to sing with the group, but Thursday night felt different. That night, we reenacted Jesus washing the disciples' feet. I could go on about how special that was, but what really touched my heart was singing Light the Fire with the group. As I was already emotional, I tried to gather myself for the song. With our arms wrapped around each other and rain pouring down on us, we began to sing. Within the first few seconds, thunder struck several times. 
Many emotions went through me, through me at that moment while the lyrics became real and I felt like God was right there with us listening. As the rain kept pouring and thunder crackling throughout the song, I burst into tears. This was my God moment when I felt like God was right there with me listening. A lyric that stood out to me was, Lord, you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. I can use these lyrics to challenge myself to grow stronger in my faith. I am blessed to have this opportunity to go on a mission trip and can't wait for future opportunities. Um, hello, so my name is Matt and I was one of the adult leaders. This was my first um, trip as an adult leader. And I, I think Zoe didn't mention it, but it was the first trip for all the kids here as well, right? So a first for a lot of us um, and I had a great time. Um, a moment that was special to me was uh, worship time at the end of every dinner in the evening. And there was about 80 people from five different churches from around the country that would meet. And it was a small cafeteria type area. All the kids at the front and then all the adults back. We would, you know, keep them in line and that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and, and, but they all did pretty good. Anyways, in one of them, there was a gentleman that came up to speak. His name was Don. Uh, he was actually from another church in Wisconsin. And uh, he, he was older. He was probably one of the oldest uh, people on the trip uh, and had done a lot in his life. He had, was is a Bible translator. That's his uh, profession. He's done it for 40 years. has been on missionaries and all kinds of great things. Um, and so when he got up to speak, uh, we didn't have to keep anybody, any of the kids in line. He was just very riveting. Um, and spoke very well, and, and all the kids were quiet, and everybody was paying attention. And he was talking to the kids, and he was telling them a message about how, um, you know, he's, he was old, he's tired, he's done a lot in his life, um, he was very happy with everything that he's done in his life, and they're young, and they've got a, a lot of youth, and they've got a lot of life left ahead of them, and he wanted to encourage them to, you know, go out there and charge and, and capture the world, right? And I'm sitting in the back and I'm going, well, okay, <laughs> I'm not uh, in high school anymore, um, but I'm, uh, I still got a, life, a lot of life left as well. And um, I still have a time to go out and make a difference in this world. And um, I'm not sure exactly what that's gonna be, but um, I hope that when I'm, with, I'm his age, um, that I'm, I'm happy and I'm comfortable with what I did with my life and that I feel like I made a difference. And so it was very inspiring to me. Good morning, my name is Melissa DeBoer and um, I was also privileged to spend my week with these um, wonderful people up here beside me. Um, we had a really great time and um, you've heard some highlights um, from all of them, which I would echo, those were all great moments for me as well. Um, another opportunity that we had in our small group was to go to uh, a huge food pantry a distribution center called Feeding the Gulf. Um, they actually serve the Florida Panhandle, Mississippi, and Alabama, and um, lots and lots of food donations there. So our group was split into two groups. One side was um, going through the actual donations that had come in, just looking for our damaged items, and if there was things that were expired, we had to toss those away. Anything that was usable, we put on a kind of a conveyor belt. The other half of our group was there to sort them into types of food, um, we worked hard and solid and really without a break for the whole time we were there, we were able to uh, pack up almost 2,000 pounds of food, I think 83 boxes, um, like banana boxes. Um, so it was just a great experience and very humbling to think of all of the people that we will be able to serve with the work that we did in just a couple hours. So there are two people that are not with us this morning. Um, one of our adult leaders, Eric, is going to see his daughter, Ruth, that a lot of you know, preach this morning in Milwaukee. So he, after getting back last night, left for Milwaukee early this morning. And then um, one of our students, Ben Geister, left at 2 a.m. to drive to Canada with his family. So <laughs> they're not with us this morning, but they did um, record short videos. Um, and so we can play those if they are gonna work.
morning, y'all. Sorry I can't be in church this morning. I'm in Milwaukee listening to my daughter Ruth preach. Did want to give you a little bit of insight from my time on the mission trip. It was great to see community members that uh, were not defined by their circumstances. No matter what the lot they were given, they were proud of what they had uh, and the life that they are living. They were gracious uh, and they were kind and happy. Um, and it was really great to see our youth responding with the same kind of values. Uh, they took pride in their work no matter what it was, whether it was picking up trash or painting houses uh, or whether it was cutting trees, pulling weeds, um, whatever. They did the best um, job and made sure that the job was completed to the best of their abilities. Um, and they were gracious to our hosts um, for them allowing us to come into their lives for at least just a little while. It's happy, I'm happy to be able to be part of a church that instills these values, and we can see that coming through uh, in our youth. And I believe these mission trips really give them a chance to see uh, how those values make a difference. Thank you. Morning, y'all. Sorry I can't be in church this morning. I'm in Milwaukee listening to my daughter Ruth preach. Did want to. I think throughout the whole week, our group got a lot closer, where once I saw people who were basically strangers to me, I was beginning to see new friends. My testimony comes from the fourth day of our time in Bayou Battery. During our worship, with the youth work staff washed the feet of our adult leaders, and many of them began to cry. And I didn't yet understand what was so moving. And when we had our feet washed, I never expected to cry. It wasn't exactly the foot washing itself that moved me. It wasn't the prayer either. It was afterwards when I looked around at everyone. So many emotions and so many faces. Everything was quiet. And for the first time, I truly felt it. God's unconditional love. I finally understood what a church family is. It was then that a tear fell on my cheek. That night when we sang Light the Fire together in the rain, tears falling with the rhythm of the warm tropical rain, all of my homesickness and exhaustion melted away as my clothes became soaked with the rain. And simultaneously, my heart became saturated with that warm, unadulterated, unconditional love. That's my three minute testimonial. All right, so we've heard a lot about to light the fire today, but we're gonna sing it for you and with you. Um, sometimes it can feel a little bit weird when we've done this before and we make a circle and close ourselves off to you. So we're gonna keep ourselves open to you today, um, but we would like to invite anybody up that has been on a mission trip before or has been part of SOAR. Um, it's really cool to see year after year how much our little light the fire group grows. So if you are a uh, if you are a light the firer, <laughs> please come up. And a lot of you have heard this song many many times, so you can please sing with us today. And we we can you know we can do our like little arm thing.
Oh, we're gonna hear from Ryan, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow, right? Do we need a message today? <laughs> I, I think we just got a message and I, as I was taking notes, I'm like, God is so good because all that they have just shared with us is how we neighbor well. Thanks be to God for your willingness to step out of your comfort zones, go to a place you've never been. Being a first timer is hard. Thank you for your witness on behalf of the Onalaska Church. You are a gift to us. Let us join our hearts now in our prayer of confession and pardon. God of grace, forgive us, for we are fragmented people. We go in many directions at once. We seek opposite goals. We serve contradictory causes. We preach justice. We walk in injustice. We shout peace. We practice violence. We pray for life. We trade in death. Through your compassion, have mercy on us and make us whole. May your thoughts become our thoughts and our ways, your ways, through Jesus Christ. Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts 17, verses 16 through 34. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews, and they looked ill about persons, and also in marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this pretentious babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be the proclaimer of divine divinities. This was because he was telling good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to Areopagus and asked him, may we know this, what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I know how, I see how extremely spiritual you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines and but made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, so he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life, breath, awful things. 
one ancestor, he made all peoples to inhabit the whole, whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places they, where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps fumble about for him and find him, though he, indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move as some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are suffering, we are God's offspring, we ought not to think of the de deity as like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by our Im imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will give have the world judged in righteousness by man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them, but some of them joined him and became believers, including the Dionysius, the, the Aparagite, and the fellow, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Thanks, Mr. Sense God. of writing. Thanks be to God. What a masterful. What a masterful reading by Ruth this morning. Sorry, I always like to throw some curveballs. Hopefully, you don't get them every time. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is to go to the Wisconsin State Fair. Have any of you ever been to the State Fair? <laughs> wonderful, glad to see that we're supporting the agriculture and the, all of the wonderful things that people are doing along with the rides. My favorite, of course, is the food. I have a particular bench that I like to sit at when I go to the Wisconsin State Fair. It's just near the little place where you can get Mexican corn in a cup. That is my absolute favorite food at the Wisconsin State Fair. I don't need it on a stick. I don't need it fried or covered in chocolate. Just give me Mexican corn. And when I sit on this bench, my favorite thing to do is people watch. Do you all like to people watch? You see humanity in all of its wonderful forms. Sometimes you see the best in people, sometimes the worst. And the more and more that I go, I see styles of clothing and hair that even I think would send me over the edge sometimes, but I'm not judging. I'm just saying it's interesting. So here we find Paul. Paul is in the middle of the Cultural and Learning Center in Athens, and he is by himself, which is not normal. Most often, people needed to travel together in order to sustain themselves. And so Paul is in this big city, and he's sitting around, and he's looking at all of the people. And he's thinking to himself, wow, they have certainly fallen short of what it means to worship God. Maybe they don't even know about God. They've got this little God and that little God, and pretty soon they're, they're doing things that they would not otherwise do. And Paul was paying particular attention to two distinct groups. You know how we are as human beings. You can tell a group of people who happen to be connected because of some cultural or societal way of connecting. You've seen it. How many of you have ever been to school? You know, well, in my day it was called the jocks and the freaks. Well, maybe it's different now, I know. I'm, I'm dating myself, sorry. <laughs> but Paul could pick out two distinct groups. One was the Epicureans, and the other was the Stoics. The Epicureans were known for pursuing life contentment. Doesn't that sound like peaceful? A content life with no worries or anxiety or anything like that? Wouldn't that be wonderful? So they were focused on that. The Stoics, on the other hand, were so committed and looking for things that will give them reason, to proclaim how they should live their lives. Therefore, they would be able to cultivate a virtuous life. So does that sound anything like who we are as United Methodists? There's a method that we study in order to help us to grow as disciples. 
Well, Paula was excited to see these two groups, but they must not have made up enough of the group so that he went to the public center of the community because he was gonna let them know how important it was for them to get their act together. And so he went to this place that was on the hill and it was near the Acropolis, one of the most important cultural centers of that time. He didn't mince words there. He didn't know these people. He did not step aside and say, well, I'm going to take it slow and do all that stuff. No, he went directly for the cultural center to proclaim the message that he had come to share. And that was that God had created all of everything in the world, the people, the animals, creation, everything, and that this should be the only God that was worshiped. And he did not take no for an answer. He kept pushing. Jesus Christ is Lord. Here's what we can take away from Paul today. He went to where the people were instead of waiting for the people to come to him. He knew he had a message for all of the people to find that virtuous life, that life of contentment, and he did not want them to wait. He wanted them to know then. So I have this, this image that I'd like to share with you. It sits on my desk as a reminder. It comes from Winnie the Pooh. You can't stay in your corner of the forest waiting for others to come to you. You have to go to them sometimes. I don't know who gave this to me. I often jot down when I get something from someone. I remember someone presenting this to me. And they, they, they said, we're so grateful because you come to us. You're not waiting for us to show up in your office. You come to us. And it's always reminded me that when I get complacent or I, I start thinking about, well, I haven't seen so-and-so. Guess what? I need to go see so-and-so because God has laid that person on my heart. Pooh's advice in this quote reminds us that if we want to accomplish something, we must remember that it's our responsibility to make an effort and to go out of our comfort zones, our comfortable corner of the forest, as witnessed in our mission troop, our mission group kids and their leaders. That is a prime example. We heard in their words how just developing a relationship, I think it was um, John who said, getting to know the son of one of the homes that they were working at. I'm sure that wasn't easy. It's never easy to join into a group of people that you don't, don't know at all. And yet, God used John to meet that young person in their familiarity of being about the same age. Friends, we're beginning a journey. If you thought last week was all fun and roses and oh my gosh, we're gonna talk about love of God and love of neighbor, don't forget that there's always a challenge that comes with good thoughts. We are going to learn the art of neighboring. It is one thing to say, we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Those are words from scripture, but it's a whole different ball game. Thank you, Melissa, or uh, Jessica, for your children's message today. It's a whole different ball game to actually live it out. And so we're gonna stretch ourselves. We're gonna get outside of our comfort zones. I've heard many people say, we're poised for growth. That is our goal. We're being coached to do that. I've also heard people say already, we need to gather the people back that have stepped away or become non-committed or lost their commitment to coming to church every week. Not because we need them in the seats, but because we miss their relationships. We miss what they brought to us as a community of people. And it's our job, it's, it's not theirs. Let's open our, our, our lines of communication and tell people that we're missing them. Now that's one part of it. But the next part of it comes from moving in our own neighborhoods, like the literal people who live around you. If you'd show the next slide, please. 
we all live in homes or apartments or some sort of a dwelling. Some of us maybe even live in your automobile, but you have neighbors around you. Some of them you have known maybe for 50 years because you've lived there that long. Like me, I am less than 30 days in my new home and I'm getting to know my neighbors in West Salem. So some are strangers to me. Maybe you know them because you've waved. You've gone across the street to get an egg or some other supply you need. Maybe they've come over to help you to lift something into your house or maybe they've heard that someone in your family passed away and they've sent a card or said, I'm so, I'm sorry. And so they've become more than that. They've become an acquaintance. But how many of us share deep relationship with our neighbors? Anybody? I know, right? Isn't that sad? Shouldn't all of our hands be raised? We wonder why our communities struggle when times get tough and we face division because we don't know our neighbors and we can't go to them and have honest and open conversations because they're not, there's not this foundation of a relationship to, to build those conversations on. And so over the course of the next few weeks in our worship series, we're gonna work on this together. And it's gonna be uncomfortable, and it's gonna be hard, and you're gonna wanna give up. But nothing is impossible with God. And if you don't like the strategies and you have one of your own, let's talk about it. Let's figure out how to make this successful because we do want to be like Paul taking the message of Jesus Christ to all the corners of the world so that people might have contentment and opportunity to know the love of God. So let's not miss the mark. We're going to try and we're going to fail. It'll be okay. Failure is part of success. We don't like a lot of failures, but failure is a part of ongoing success. And so here's your homework assignment. Did you think you were going to come to church and get a homework assignment? Well, guess what? <laughs> Inside of your worship folder is what is called the um, block map. And in this map is a center square that has a house in it. That's where you live. Your task is to name all of the people who live around you to fill in those eight blocks. Now, don't get all literal on me, because my backyard neighbor happens to be the Christ St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church. And I can tell you that already they have neighbored me, because it was about two and a half weeks before I got a lawnmower. And as I was outside struggling to mow the hill in my backyard, their person saw me struggling, who was mowing their giant lawn, and offered to assist me and mowed that area. That is what being a neighbor is. So I'm going to get to know Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church, a church that probably would not accept me as a pastor, certainly not as a strong woman in leadership, but I'm going to get to know that neighbor. And so you might be able to name, like let's do a test. If you were thinking and you're sitting in your house, of all the people who live around you, can you name eight? Raise your hand if you do. Woo, good. How about it, can you name five? All right, so we got, we got some progress here. So it's one thing to be able to name them, but what do they do? What do their kids do? Are they lonely? Do they, do they need someone like the mission trip kids offer to us just to sit and to listen to them? Could they use some food or some prayer? Could they just want a neighbor to know that they actually exist? And when their yard goes into disrepair because they've lost the ability to mow their grass, are we gonna show up and, and help them out? So that's your task. Is it doable? Is it doable? 
Bible. Okay. <laughs> I know you guys are uh, sometimes sleepy at 8 in the morning, but I think this is doable. So I'm going to ask you in the next week to be thinking about this, and then we're just going to check in with each other every week to see how we're doing on our black map. And all of this is going to culminate, hopefully, in a black party. Does that not sound like fun? Y yes! <laughs> and whether it's in your own neighborhood or if we have it right here at the church on uh, rally day, we are going to learn who our neighbors are. So friends, the whole point of this exercise is to get us thinking about the fact that we may, know their, we may not know our neighbors' names, or maybe we do, but knowing their name is not enough. We need to love them, and to love them means to get to know them further than just their name. To be a part of the community and the values that you have then become your community values. And as each one of us in our location develops those community values, then guess what? We connect with other communities and neighborhoods and pretty soon our whole city and area are living in a different way because we have gotten to know one another. So let us be a strong force for Jesus Christ as Paul was. Let's step into those gaps and show and tell people that we love and care for them by our words and our actions. God loves each of you. Let's take that love to our neighbors. Amen. As we share our prayer requests today, uh, I would invite those who are with us online to um, text your prayer request to 608-304-7214. <coughs> and would one of our young people be willing to take the microphone around? Okay. If you have a prayer request today, <coughs> uh, <laughs> I guess Zoe's going to do it for us. <laughs> have a prayer request if you would just raise your hand and then share your name so that I can get to know you a little bit more and your prayer request. Okay, we have one. Oh, yep, yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, my name is Melissa again. Um, I just want to say another prayer of thanksgiving for this awesome uh, past week and the students that um, just were so great in representing OUMC and just making us proud all week long. I'm just really thankful for each and every one of them. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Uh, over here we had one. I'm a visitor today in your church, um, and I want to pray for my sister who's in the hospital with COVID and for the girls' parents that are on vacation up in Hayward that they get home safely. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, my name is Debbie, and I'm also a visitor here today. Um, on my hour and 15-minute drive up here from Eastman, I saw six deer along the way. Um, one beautiful buck that I thought somebody would enjoy seeing later this fall. But um, as I was coming up, um, I, there was a car approaching me, and all of a sudden I saw him swerving towards the ditch. And it was pretty steep, and I thought, oh, Lord, please be with him. And he drove pretty far into the ditch, and pretty soon he's struggling with it, and he comes back out safely into the road. So I'm not sure why that happened, but... Thank you, dear God, for safely pulling him out of the ditch. Praise God. Thank you so much, Debbie, and welcome. That's Peggy. We were at a celebration of life yesterday for a 40-year-old mm. um, son of one of our cousins, and um, 
he died a few months ago, but I just want prayers for his mom and dad and his sister. They are still so in grief and taking it so hard, and they still have not, the doctor still has not written off on the death certificate because they're still investigating the mm. cause of death. Praying for your, your family. I see you, Ruth, yep. Uh, prayers from my mom. She's having knee surgery this week, and hopefully things will go very well. We'll pray for your mom. Thank you. Um, Ruth, too. I have a joy in that it's my mom's 49th birthday today. Woo! <laughs> Is mom happy to be outed in that way? <laughs> happy birthday, mom. <laughs> um, prayers for everyone in Bayou Abache as there's a tropical storm that could hit. Mm. So. For the tropical storm who could hit the area that you just served. And then Ruth. She has shingles, mm -hmm. and it has affected her bowels and her her hips and everything. And she's just struggling so hard with it that she needs prayers. Praying for the neighbor who has come frequently. Thank you. All right, let it. Oh, sorry. I gotta look behind. <laughs> Kathy, um, I have a friend who I just learned yesterday has COVID, so I would ask for prayers for Arlene. Um, I, I'm going to see my mom, who's 98 tomorrow, Ooh. and um, she continues to slip just a little bit more all the time. So thank you for prayers for Jean. And I want to lift up the leaders of our world that we continue to ask for good decisions made by them. Thanks be to God for family, for healing, and for our leaders. As we prepare our hearts for prayer today, um, I think in the interest of time, we're just going to pray. Sound like a good idea? All right. Let us uh, join our hearts in prayer today. Gracious and holy God, we come to you today as servants. We remember how Jesus served us. It seems so easy to read about it or hear about it. It's a whole other thing to put it in action. He was compassionate to every person he met within the areas that he spent the most time and even in the outreaches of the world. And so we ask you to do the same with us. Help us to meet our neighbors, to know more about them than their, than their name, and to find that the intersection of life that you have led us to offers us that connection and that opportunity to grow. For all the prayers that have been named aloud today, for gratitude, for worry, for grief and fear, for healing and hope, for birthdays, for weather. Thank you, O oh God, that we can trust that you are working in the midst of it all. On this day, O oh God, humble us and bring us to our knees in pray, praise and prayer that through our understanding of your grace, which is abundant and undeserved, that we might have a new opportunity for renewal, regeneration, forgiveness, and a future where all God's children are gathered in your holy name. Bless us this day. Make us one with each other. And guide us as we now share the prayer that your son taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, we are inviting you to make an offering through our online giving. If this is your first time with us today, we consider that your gift to the church. And for the rest of those gathered, there are collection plates on your way out where you can make your offering that supports the ministry of this congregation and it out, its outreach efforts to serve the world. Let us now hear from the choir. Oh, sorry. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling.
season. We trust you with our lives. You're the peace in our troubled sea. You're the fire before us, constant in the darkness, and you will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us
y'all can sit, I'm sorry, you, you can sit down again, sorry. And Kathy, where's Kathy? There's Kathy. Kathy has a uh, gift for you that she's going to share. Stitchers. As you all know, um, one of Paul's duties has been director of small groups, and the Mission Stitchers are a small group. And we meet the first and the third Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. And I'm going to put a plug in. If you like to sew, cut fabric, sort scraps, or you're just curious what we do, you're welcome to join us. <laughs> So I'd like to present to Paul, and thanks for your faith, your commitment, and your kindness, the quilt that the group has made. <laughs> yes. We know how much you love Isle Royal. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you want to say anything? In your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as you heard earlier, this is uh, Paul's last official relationship with us in a staff role, but he plans to hang around and be a part of the Onalaska community. Paul has accepted a full-time position at um, Western Technic College where he was working part-time. And so today we say thank you for seven years of commitment to the church, commitment to the people, and fostering so much care and community here and helping us to grow in our relationship with our neighbors. And I, I don't know what the tradition is here, but I would like us to each extend our hands as we offer a blessing over Paul in this new role of him serving God's community. So gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for this servant, Paul, for all the ways that he has touched lives both here and afar. As he takes his gift giftedness into this new role in his listening well to people that they might discern where God is calling them, empower him to listen and to share his gifts so that they might know how much they are loved and what, where God is calling them to be. So bless him. In our gratitude, we offer it all to you that you use this servant well in the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Do you want to say anything? <laughs> Thank you very much. I didn't know I was going to get called up here or have to say anything. Uh, this quilt is amazing. I love the outdoors and animals and camping. This is perfect. Um, I'll just keep it brief here. I know we're running a bit over, but um, I want to thank you all so much for the past seven years. Um, you can't get rid of me that easily. We'll still be around. Um, but it's going to be interesting to be uh, sitting in the pews and, uh, <laughs> and that kind of thing and instead of always being behind the scenes there. But um, thank you so much for, for all your support these years and for all the volunteering, all the help um, that, that made everything possible um, for my position and all of us on staff. And uh, let's eat some cake after the service. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Paul. <laughs> I will also keep announce my announcement brief. Uh, Vacation Bible School, two weeks from today. I need a games leader and a snack leader. I have helpers for both of those, but I need someone to take the lead a little bit and um, just help with um, organizing the games and the snacks. Uh, everything will be donated, so if you think you might be able to help with that, please see me after service today. Also could use um, some more youth to be crew leaders. So. Anyone would like to do that, please see me as well. Today is the last day to get tickets for the chicken queue, and Jackie will be out at the table in the new lobby, so please see her there. Um, let's stand as you're comfortable and able. We're going to sing verse 1 and 5. Sorry, Booth. Sorry, choir. <laughs> Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's eat cake. <laughs>